What's going on, Combat Sports Nation? This is Sean here with a Beyond the Map video cast with Mike Dianella, who will be uh, facing Detrick Keys. Uh, I think I'm saying it right. At Plymouth Memorial Hall, January 28th at Cage Titans Fighting Championship. There, it's uh, 30 second show. Mike, how are you? I'm doing good, Sean. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, I, I have your fight going on in the background. I wanted to uh, take a look here. Tell, tell me. Tell me how it was. How was it feeling walking out for the first time? It, it was beautiful. It's a feeling that I'll never get sick of. Let, let, let's take it's a minute. Not, let's let's take a minute and, and look at that there. You see that guy right there? Yeah. Wow. He's cut up, man. Shredded. <laughs> tell, tell me that feeling that you were going through uh, as you were walking down on those I stairs. I tell you, I, 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 of course, I was nervous because it was my first time. Right. But. My nerves went away. The reason I stand there so long, I forgot my mouthpiece. <laughs> and the rep was good enough to let me like hang up like three minutes. One of my coaches, Machiobi, ran upstairs and ripped through my bag and found my mouthpiece. And who who was that? Um, Miner. I think that was... Uh, yeah, Brian Miner. Yeah, Miner. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. <laughs> He's a good guy. He is definitely a good guy. Sure good guy. At least you didn't forget your cup. That that would have been... Uh, yeah, now, that would have been a lot worse. W was it your mouthpiece that somebody ended up getting, or did you end up getting somebody else's? No, my. I was about to head in with a non-formed mouthpiece, and that's like a pet peeve of mine. I have to have it formed to my mouth. So I started getting nervous, but then Mark came running down the stairs with my mouthpiece. So <laughs> thank you, Mark Giovi. Appreciate it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So you've had some fights that uh, the opponent, one thing led to another. They they dropped out, or they yeah. They can say they can say whatever they want, but I wouldn't want to fight me either. So I don't really think. <laughs> Why is that? Why do you think that is? Well, what has happened? Well, I tell you what it is. I'm a bad man, and the guys I tra I train with straight killers. I've had one amateur fight. I'm training with undefeated pros like Manny Bermudez, Joe Joe Gianetti, Skeletor. I'm training with guys like Bobby Gazia, the you know 175 pound champion of Cage Titans. How can I lose against these guys that at my level? I'm a level up. I'm a level up from these guys that I'm fighting, and they find out and they pull. They start asking around. Justin Bombardier, he started asking around. He didn't like what he heard, so he pulled. His excuse to me was, his excuse to me was, he's too old to make the weight, the weight cut. He's 25, I'm 27, and it's hard when he has kids. He's got, I got two, so I'm not trying to hear that. And whatever Jose Atiles' uh, excuse was, I just know what it is. They don't want to be the next man down, Sean. All right, so so it's there, it's out there. What is man down? Well, what it is is. You know, you get in there with some of these guys, they think they're slick, they think they're hot, they're coming in, they got their jab hand down, their rear hands down by their chest, and the saying goes, hands down, man down. <laughs> and I put them down, Sean. You seen in the first fight. That, that's exciting, that's exciting. Hey, your, your opponent was really tough. You, you used um, uh, your jiu-jitsu, uh, your, your, your grappling, South Shore sports fighting, as you have the right whole, in the background. The whole, the bad scientist. <laughs> so... So, uh, and everybody says that Bill Mahoney is the master game planner. Uh, what what was your game plan going into your first fight, being your debut? He he was debuting. There's the un, quote unquote the unknown. Um, Which is the scariest. The unknown is the scariest thing. Honestly, the game plan was to go in there and stand up. We figured him being out of Brazilian martial arts center in Somerville that he would have a ground game. And as soon as we came out and he threw that leg kick, the game plan changed to buying him a one way ticket to Pound Town. <laughs> You have, I want to say punchline after punchline. What is going to be the punchline when you when you walk into the cage and your hand is raised thereafter? Well, good. I'm, I'm glad that you already know I'm going to win because there's no way I would lose to somebody on this lower level than me. He's lucky to even be in that cage with me, first of all. But second of all, uh, this time, this dude was making memes. Me and my teammate, Johnny Campbell, we're, we're fighting guys out of the same gym from the Worry Warehouse in South Carolina. And these guys went on Johnny's fight card from Cage Titans that was posted on Facebook, and they were making memes about us. <laughs> and he made a meme about me because my last name's Danella. He was so, he was, you know, real good and rhymed it with vanilla. Like, I didn't hear that growing up my whole life. Uh, and he made a meme with me on top of an ice cream cone. So after I whooped this dude's ass, I'm going to hand out some ice cream for everybody. <laughs> is that, uh, and you're, you're an intense guy. Do, do you feed into that? Do, does that drive you? Does, is that like, uh, I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't say I feed into it 
As a matter of fact, it actually made me more confident in this fight. Because this kid's out there making memes while I'm in the gym, hitting rounds and hitting the mats. And uh, you just can't reproduce that. You know what I'm saying? You can do, you can say you're doing things, but when you're actually doing it, you'll see. You'll see when we fight. You'll see the difference between a guy making memes on his computer and a guy who's training all the time. As you've been training and your opponent keeps on tra- uh, changing, how much have you changed or have you needed to change for keys? Or does Bill say, you know what, it's about you guys, it's not about him? Bill, Bill does say that a lot, and in my case, I don't worry about these dudes because it, not one not one person I got, not one of the two people that pulled out or the, the guy that I'm going to fight is anywhere near my level. So I just concentrate on myself, and I'll blow through them when the time comes. Comparing your skills side by side, is there anything that stands out from him, or where do you see yourself being most dominant? Uh, in every facet of the fight, there's nothing this guy has that's a better level than me, no matter how hard he's training now. And the fight got moved up because clearly he hasn't been training. So if he thinks 12 days of training is going to take me on, well, he's clearly a joker. Because that's a joke. said you're going to 160 because short notice and he asked for it. But Yeah, my two, my two original fights were supposed to be at 55. My last fight was at 50. I like to say I'll fight whoever at whatever weight they want. It really doesn't matter to me. If they're stronger, I'm faster. If they're faster, I'm stronger. It's a guarantee. You're walking down the stairs for the second time. How do you feel that's going to be different than the first? Knowing you, knowing your, this is your second fight camp, this is your second, um, it'll be your second time walking into the cage. How do you think it's going to be different or how has your preparation, not opponent preparation, but mental preparation been different? Um, my, me- my, my, mental, my mental game was so on point for the first fight that I haven't changed anything. Mm. I felt great physically. I felt great mentally. Uh, of course, there's nerves. You're getting half you're half naked standing in front of thousands of people about to fight somebody. Of course, there's nerves. But I had very little doubt that my training would fail me. You know, I knew going in there that I had done I had done enough to beat my opponent, and I feel the same way already. And I don't I don't quit. I don't stop. You know, mm. and, and guys guys can't handle that. And, and and this dude took the, you know, took, like I said, taking the fight on short notice, I really appreciate it, but I'm a, I'm a nightmare, man. You need a lot more than 12 days to prepare for me. When, when was the moment you said, I'm going to be, you're 27, right? And, yeah. and that, that's quote unquote late uh, in, in the sport uh, of mixed martial arts. But at the same time, people say mixed martial arts is the only sport that you could really start and have success Right. In, in, in many many different facets of your life uh, as far as age. Right. You're 27. When did you make that decision to, to join a gym uh, and you wanted to fight or was it just joining a gym and this is where it progressed? Well, when I was younger, I, I did box a little bit and I always kept up with that workout. I would always stay going to the gym even if I didn't do it competitively. But then, you know, once I was 21, I had my first kid and then... I was 24, we had, I said, me and my wife had our second child, and before I knew it, I was like 230 pounds. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and I can, I can remember the day I had the revelation, I got on the scale and I saw 230, and it all first started with just trying to lose the weight and get healthy, and I got down to 200 pounds, I did a, tr- a 5K trail run in Weymouth, this was a couple of years ago, and then, you know, I was always a fan of combat sports and MMA, and... um so I said, screw it, let me try to lose some more weight and look for a gym. And I got down to like 180, I was feeling good. And I, I just so happened to stumble across South Shore Sport Fitness. And I went in and that very first day, I made the mistake of sparring with Manny, Manny Bermudez. <laughs> and uh, after getting my head smashed in for like three or four rounds, I was like, I love this place. <laughs> and uh, I just kept going and kept progressing. You know, I did a Naga last year down in Connecticut. I won that in my bracket. And, um, you know, I, I kept kind of bugging Bill. I'm like, Bill, you think I can fight? You think I can fight? And, you know, I proved myself to Bill, and he's down with it. And I'm down, I, I'm down for social. I, I ride or die for social sport fight. Those guys are unreal. The, the coaches in there, Machiobi, Ryan White. I mean, Bill's a mad scientist. The, the, the fighters in there, uh, uh, Jimmy Manning, Manny Bermudez, Jojo Giannetti, Bobby Gassia, Zach Sabatino. I mean, everybody helps everybody. There's no, you know, everybody's in for the team. It's unlike anything. And that's why we run through all these other gyms. 
That's why we're the most feared team. That's why guys back out. Giannetti just got a new opponent. Yeah. Guys stay backing out. You have a lot of buzz around you. Uh, I, I'm sure it's because of your performance, um, your animated personality. Um, is this, is this you? I mean, we know each other very little, but how much of this is you and how much of it is, is, um, the promoter, the fighter, or is it all one and the same? The, the beautiful thing is it, it, it has become all one and the same. I don't hide nothing. You can ask my wife. I'm like this when the camera's off. I don't stop. She gets, she gets pissed off. She's like, will you just sit down for a minute and just take a breath? I'm always going. I don't sleep. I don't rest. You know, and it just so happens that this is, this. Is, I'm good at this. I know. What am I going to lie for? I know I'm good at this, but that's because I'm, I'm not lying. That's because everything is true. It's all real. You know, people people comment on my Facebook videos and stuff. I see people out and they say, oh, you know, I get my kids involved in everything because that's what I'm doing. You know, if I'm not at the gym, I'm here hanging with my kids or working. You know what I mean? And I just let people in. That's really all it is. I just let people in and goof around. And everyone's like, oh, you know, you're good. You're crazy on social media. Nah, I'm just report, hitting record while I'm dancing or some shit. I'm not doing anything crazy. <laughs> Where'd the fighter in you start? W- were you were you a troubled kid? Were you you know what? Well, I did so much that I was a troubled kid, but I didn't take no shit. I was gonna say you don't seem like you don't fight in school. And my dad's my dad said you know I, I get kind of get that from my dad. My dad said, look, if you're gonna fight, if you're gonna be a fighter and, and shit. You know, you're going to have to learn to defend yourself if you're going to have a mouth like that. <laughs> and, uh, that's, you know, that's how he got me into boxing, and I just fell in love. But I get that. Honestly, I get that from my dad. I get the fighter in me, all that crazy stuff. That that all comes from my dad. That transformation that happens in the ring, that's, that's all from the old man. I'm not looking for you to call a person out, but is there a style of fighter that you could put a name on that you're like, that is what I want to challenge myself with or by? Honestly, I'm a fan of this dude, so I don't want him to think I'm calling him out because that's not what I'm doing, but I am a John Duma fanboy. <laughs> that kid is so tough. That dude is so tough. If it ever ends up that he's still amateur while I am, I would love to get in there with him just for how tough he is. I might be starstruck. You know what I'm saying? I love that dude. That dude is tough as nails. What up, Duma? <laughs> that's but, awesome. I mean, you know, I'm just trying to take it one fight at a time. I'm not trying to call anybody out. When it comes to that, when it comes to that, I am fairly new, you know. So I'm not trying to do any of that. But I, I, I love how John Duma fights. He is so tough, and especially in his last, you know, his last fight, um, he. Yeah, and that was awesome because I'm up in the stands with all, like all my friends that came and everything, and I'm like, "Yo, this kid John Duma is so tough." And he comes out in the first two rounds, and Rossi's putting a beat yeah. on him. And my buddies are like, "You're crazy! You don't know what happened." And then the third round, Duma pulls out the choke for the title. Good shit, Duma. Have you heard the saying, "Fighters fight"? Uh, yeah, that's just I what they do. Time. What What does that What does that saying or what does that phrase mean to you? It means that I whooped ass eight weeks ago. And I'm coming to whoop ass now. Fight is fight. It's understandable if you get injuries, but if you're a fighter, you fight. Look what just happened to Giannetti. He thought he was fighting a fighter. He thought dude was gonna fight. He pulled out. He pulled out ten days before the fight. And Giannetti's still fighting. And look at the dude Giannetti's fighting. Crow's neck Butin. Yep. That kid's got like thirty fights. He's a fighter. I don't care what his record is. Yep. He will He's fight anyone. Fight. That's what I'm saying. Fight is fight. Win or lose, you fight. <laughs> Name something that most people wouldn't know about you. Wouldn't know about me? I mean, like I say, I try to put it all out there, but, you know, hmm. I don't really leave much to mystery. I'll be honest with you. I'm a hardworking man, and I and I enjoy the time with my family and my kids. Uh, I can sing the whole Frozen theme song. <laughs> okay, okay, there you go. What's something that the fans who are only seeing you for the second time or even the first time, what are they going to learn about you come um, the 28th? That it's no bullshit. All the talk, all the animation. It may seem like I'm somebody that's not focused, but I'm tunnel. I have tunnel vision on this dude. And I'm here to prove that that first fight is only the beginning of, of my record, of what I'm going to be known for. That's just the beginning. And what, what will you or what is your, your intention to be known for? exciting fun fights i mean i honestly i want to i want to as although i'm focused and of course i'm concentrating on my opponent i also want to make the crowd happy mm. 
Because if you make the crowd happy, you make Paul Bear happy. And who doesn't want to make Paul Bear happy? <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's you know, Most fighters, look, uh, most fighters, they envision the fight before it happens. Have you envisioned the fight and and what has been the outcome or do you have a do you have a prediction? Yeah, I uh, I see a first round finish. Uh he's known for only having like a minute and a half of stamina anyway when he's training fully for a fight, so I can't see more than 45 seconds of him gripping, ripping, spraying and praying. <laughs> and uh I take pride I take pride in my cardio, so I'll pepper him up on the feet and we'll be done in the first round. What can the fans expect from you? I mean, return uh south to shore very close to Plymouth Memorial Hall. You guys always bring a huge crowd, whether it's one team member fighting or uh, multiples, as as in most cases. What can yeah, we fans... get on this card again? Yeah. So, uh, uh, what can the fans expect from you, from you and th- the team? Le- uh, if they remember last card, we ran again. We didn't lose once, mm-hmm. and as a matter of fact, all of our fights were a finish, and they can expect the same thing: six and zero, oh, all finishes. And of course, exciting as all hell. You got Man Down, Skeletor, Tooth, Zachy Sabatino, my boy Rich Hackens fighting, Johnny Campbell's fighting. He's the co-main event. Nothing but excitement. I mean, I'm excited just talking about it. <laughs> yeah, you're an excitable guy. Let me ask you, as a fan, if you weren't attending the event, or excuse me, if you weren't fighting at the event and you were attending, what is the fight you're looking forward to watching? Um... I, I would have to I would have to say Johnny Campbell versus Mike Whaley because Johnny Johnny's coming off a few tough losses and he looks unreal in the gym and boy he's shredded he's moving unreal he looks really good and of course I'm always looking forward to seeing Joe Skeletor Giannetti fight and that kid's so exciting and, and look at he's he hasn't lost in his whole MMA career amateur and pro so I mean short notice quick switch on the fighter. Crow's neck's gonna be eating some crow's pie from Giannetti. How's the family feel about uh, about you stepping into the cage? Uh, immediate family or, or, or your wife? And I'm sure she's supportive, but um... she she's unbelievable. I couldn't without her. I couldn't fight. I couldn't. There wouldn't be any time. You know. I you know I try to help out as much as I can with the kids. You know she takes the lead on that, and she's you know there's some days as, as focused as I am and stuff. There's some nights I don't want to miss dinner and miss the kids going to bed and shit. But she always she always tells me, you know, go. They're fine. They're gonna be fine. You go to the gym. You do your thing, and you'll see them when you come home. And some nights I come home, and I I'm almost like I'm almost crying, like, oh my, you know, am I there enough for my kids? And she's always reassuring me, and it's unreal without her. You know, she makes this happen. Without wife down, there's no man down. <laughs> You're keeping the theme, man. You're keeping the theme. I gotta ask you. Yeah. Joe, Joe, you know, I talked to Joe yesterday. Everybody wants to know the mustache. How? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so how does this, uh, tell me, tell me you walk into the gym, you're freshly groomed, but the mustache is looking mint. Tell me, the, <laughs> tell me the ball busting that you get done at, at the gym without that. I remember the first day I walked in with the mustache, right? Bobby Gallagher looks at me and goes, hey, Ron, did you park your bus outside? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, uh, before my before my fight against uh, Manny Rivera on the last card, Machiavelli seen me with the mustache, and I was like in my pre-fight clothes, like sweats, just hanging out. And he goes, "The mustache looks good. They should change your name to the Laundry Room Rapist." <laughs> <laughs> so, is it? Has it been? You know, have you always had that? That that? <laughs> or, or is it now like a gimmick, or or just like explain? You it. know what? Did it. The, I did it for the first fight because I like it because old school boxes used to exactly. rock. Exactly. And my dad has had a mustache. I don't know what my dad looks like without a mustache. <laughs> so I just kind of been like, like you know, thanks, dad. Thanks for everything. And then it turned into, you know, I got so many comments on the mustache. As a matter of fact, the guys that were uh, commentating on the last fight, when me and Osmani got in the ring, they go, oh, best hair versus best mustache. <laughs> That's right. And at that point, I mean, I, I got I got to keep it till I lose, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So a mustache for the rest of my life because I'll never lose. <laughs> That's good. I was going to follow up. We're going to wrap up with this in the background. Um, explain this feeling to us and um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll cut out from there. So this is you. Here, about to get the call, Brian Miner. He's got the best haircut in the business. 
<laughs> so tell me the feeling. Let's listen to it. And then, uh... Thank you, Chris. One minute, seven seconds into the second round. Referee Brian Hart called this matchup, giving you your winner, TKO by audio two strikes. A great show of respect between. Does not like that. There's no better feeling than that. That feeling, it's it's remarkable. There's you you know you can't match that. Like I said, I don't know how, what kind of drugs everybody's done, but there's no better feeling than that. <laughs> Listen, man, I greatly appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you um, <clears throat> January 28th, Plymouth Memorial Hall. It's Cage Titans 32. I have Mike Dinella. Man down. So is it Mike? Man Mike man hashtag down. Man down. So so hashtag. Look at that hashtag. Man down. So is that uh, Mike? Man down, Dinella, or Mike? Man down, Dinella. All right, my friend. Thank you so much. We look forward to you and the rest of the team at South Shore Sports Fighting uh, coming up uh, in in less than a week now. Uh, All right. Once again, Wade's great, by the way. Wade's phenomenal. I'll eat a steak if I want. Wade's great. Look at that. <laughs> Especially since he gave you an extra 10 pounds. That's right. That's great. So, my friend, I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at weigh-ins. Maybe we'll talk again then. Yes, sir. I'd love to. Good seeing you. Thank you, my friend. <laughs>